homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today, we're taking care of our large indeterminate tomatoes. Now, as the year goes by, this is late July. I think it's July the 20th or the 21st. We need to uh, do some things to keep our tomatoes growing in the right direction. Now, what'll happen is these tomatoes, let me show you over here. Get you a little closer. Now, as these tomatoes grow, they will grow outside of the cage. Here's the cage. I don't know how well you can see it, but they'll start to grow outside the cage. Now, these are almost, they've probably got another foot to get to the top of the cage. So, they're four foot tall. You can see right here. They're four foot tall. Uh, as they grow, and I noticed down here there's a, quite a few ripe ones, so it's time to get a bunch in the dehydrator. These are the Cherokee Purples. Now, to maintain these as the year goes by, uh, I just use twine. It pulls out of the center here like that. So you can stick it in your pocket and uh, keep using it. So what you want to do is to maintain these. Now, some of these you could stick back through. Just stick it right through like that and it will grow back up the cage. But some of these, if you tried that, they would just break off. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a string and tie right here. Then I'm gonna take that string and cut me off a good portion. Cut me off a good little portion of it. Now what I'm going to do is just corral these. I'll put it around this one so that it's held up and then around these. And what that'll do is it will give those support as they grow and keep them off the ground because if they get on the ground that's where disease starts. Now, those are held up, and those will be good. I'll have to come back and do this in about probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 days. About every 10, 15 days, I have to come through and do this. I put, I've got one here on the back side doing it. Now, let's talk about the way Cherokee Purples grow. Cherokee Purples are an indeterminate. That means that the vines grow all summer long. So, what they'll do is they will just keep growing and keep putting on new, new, and I'm going all the way over here to the other vine now and adding a string because we've got this vine here that needs some support too. So I'm going to add another string right here. Go. That one will get more in a minute. Let that go right there. And tie it off. Now, let's uh, look at these Cherokee Purples and talk about the way they grow. Of course, they keep growing all, all year long. Now, the way these Cherokee Purples grow, right at the bottom here, these tomatoes will start getting ripe. Here's the next set up the vine. See, these are at this part of the vine, and then this part's laying down, so I'm going to have to pick that up and give it some support. But those tomatoes are on. And then as the vine grows up, more tomatoes come on up the vine. And right up here at the top, if you look, what, up oh, I broke that one. 
what do you look and see? Well, you see a bloom. So these Cherokee purples, they put out tomatoes all along the vine. And as they grow, new tomatoes set on. Now, 90 degree temperatures uh, cause tomatoes not to set on, not to self-fertilize as well. So what will happen is we've had 90 degree temperatures here for four or five days. So these, these that are blooming now may not set any tomatoes on. But it just keeps blooming. He'll come right up over the top of this cage and just keep blooming. And as those blooms set on, then uh, when it's below 90 degrees, they'll fertilize and make, make plants. And it will have blooms that come over the top of the cage and all the way back down to the bottom to the ground by the time October gets here and we have our first frost. So these will continue to uh, put on little tomatoes just as long as the vine can keep growing. Now, one of the things you have to do is keep the weeds out. Now, I'm do all right. I've done all right on this side. But I messed up this year. I got too close to tend this row with my tractor. And that makes it tough. See, my, my peppers are kind of buried. So I need to come down through here. I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to take a riding lawnmower and just mow the crap out of that. That's what I'm thinking right at the minute. Uh, or, or I might just bring my weed eater down here and go down that row and weed eat. That might be the might be what I need to do. I hate using a weed eater, but that might be something I have to do for this one because I can't get my tractor in there to cultivate. And I've let it grow too big for the little hand tiller to take care of. But I see that the corn is starting to tassel and the, and the green beans have ran all the way to the top. So it won't be long till we start harvesting corn. Okay, I've got to get down through this row and get these tied up and you can just come along for the ride. got the first 10 tied up uh, I've got 30 more to go so let's look at uh, what I did up close so you can get a better idea let's take a look the whole purpose of tying is to get these tomatoes these tomatoes right here were laying all the way on the ground they had come over the little ropes that I had already done this is the one in between the cages okay it had to, was laying on the ground, so I got it all picked up and up here so it's no longer down there on the ground. And I see I'm going to harvest probably in the morning because I've got this to do now. 
Now, as far as uh, trimming, some people prune their tomatoes. I, I don't prune them. Uh, get this weed. And that one. Uh, I don't prune them because what will happen is the more limbs I have, the more fruit I get. Some people say that that's wrong. But if you've got a big enough cage and you keep your tomatoes off the ground, everywhere there's a bloom, there will be fruit. And I get better fruit by not pruning. See, I've gone to here, pretty much, and down to there. And you can see, I pull them up to where they are not going on the ground see this one came out of the cage down here and then I put a string on it right there that'll hold it up here now what these will do as they get the support they need see here same thing string is there now I could pull that up some more and make sure that this this limb comes over and that'll give it even more support but as they decide that, hey, I've got some support, they look like they're all laid over. Okay, here's a better example of that. These all look like they're just laid over and, and uh, almost damaged. But the truth is, these tips that are laid over, they were laying almost on the ground. So what I did was I pulled them up, and by this evening, they'll stand straight up like that and be ready to put on more fruit. So I've got, uh, how many did I get done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I got 12 done. Uh, I've got uh, 40 to do. I think 40, 40 or 50 to do. So I've got to go ahead and get at that. Okay, uh, sun's coming up. It's going to get hot soon. Uh, I think it's supposed to be 96 today, so i got to get out of this heat in a little bit. I'm going to get down this row and get as many of these uh, done as I can. Then I'm going to go back to the shop. I've got a little project I want to do. What I'm using right now is jute twine. Now, this is 200 feet. It's a dollar at our local dollar store. It's a natural product, so by spring, this will be all rotted. And it won't be wound up in my implements. So you ought to take that into account when you're doing this. I buy this for a dollar. Uh, I go through about eight of them a year. This is the empty package from the row I did today. I didn't do the whole row. I got about two-thirds down through there. And it's getting good and hot, and I'm going to head for the shop here. But use a natural product. I use this jute twine, dollar a roll. I use about eight, eight rolls a year. Now, I'll do that. I'll do this uh, this time. And then I'll come back and do it one more time. I do it about twice over the course of the year. And by that time, the tomatoes will be coming over the top of the cages. And headed down the other side. That means they're at least 10 feet tall. Go away mosquitoes. So use a natural product so it rots up. You can use jute twine. You can use uh, butcher twine. Now I have been known to buy baling twine. The jute kind. Never the plastic kind. Uh, I don't want that stuff on my property. Uh, it's been here. I've had to cut it out of my tiller and my bush hog several times. It's been here on the property, and when I find it, I throw it away, get it off the property. Uh, but this stuff rots up, and that's what you want. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, It'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing and get these uh, tomatoes tied up.